Hello everyone. My name is Jeff and I'm a therapist. I love and enjoy my job very much. Yes, I'm also married to a beautiful and smart woman and I don't want her to struggle. However, there was a problem. Due to my wife's funny business idea, I almost lost my life. So stay tuned and listen to my story about how I managed to survive. One beautiful morning, I was in my room preparing for work when my wife, Tonia, came in and handed me a list of things she needed for the house. Guys, you should have seen the bills she listed out for me. I mean, is being a man a crime? The economy isn't helping either. I told my wife not to work because the last time she came up with a business idea, it was risky and dangerous. So I asked her to stay at home while I took care of everything. I told her I would send some money later when I got to the office, and I left. Later that day, I was at work discussing with my friend. I said, bro, seriously, that lady just pissed me off. She really'd understand the stress I'm going through right now. Yes, I know she's my responsibility, but imagine this. First thing on Monday morning, she's asking me for money. Who does that? That doesn't make any sense to me. With the state of the economy, she really needs to learn how to manage. Feeling frustrated, he suggested that Tonia should get a job. Work? I replied. Hmm, bro, the last time she did, I know what I faced. So please, she should just stay at home while I work. My friend was left speechless. Honestly, guys, it's better that way because my wife... Hmm, let me not say too much yet. Keep listening to my story. Later that night, Tony and I were in the living room and she told me she had a new business idea. I exclaimed in fear, wait, really? No way. But she insisted on telling me. She said it was a business idea that required no capital and that everything needed for the business was, was already in the house. Surprised, I asked, which house? Here? How? She told me it was a short let business and that she had already done her research arguing that it was a lucrative business and people were making a lot of money from it. Hmm, seriously, that is never going to happen in my house, I told her. A short let business? For crying out loud, you don't even know these people you'll be sharing a roof with. What if they are murderers, thieves, criminals, or even fugitives? No way, it's not happening. That idea is a no for me, I said unapologetically. What if something happens to us? Who would be to blame? Just because everyone is doing it and it's working for them doesn't mean it will work for you. The following morning, I was already set for work when Tonya followed me downstairs and said, since we have three extra rooms available, why don't we make use of them? But guys, I'm not going to allow total strangers into my house. I really value my privacy and I want that to remain intact. But my wife was adamant and refused to listen to my opinion. She began with her emotional blackmail, but I didn't fall for it. She, she has never brought an idea that is fruitful. All her ideas always bring trouble to me in the end. Quick question. As a man, would you accept any business ideas from such a woman again, knowing they always lead to disaster? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section. After that, I warned her, I don't want to see any strangers in my house, or else you will have to leave. Then I left. Later that night, Tonya and I were in the living room having dinner, but I noticed she wasn't eating. I already knew what the problem was. Hmm. Women? They are truly wonderful creatures. When God said they are the weaker vessels and we should treat them as such, he wasn't mistaken. I told her that if we were going to do what she wanted, we would have to set some rules that the guests must follow. She was so excited and seemed fulfilled as she agreed to my terms. As she was about to leave, I stopped her and asked if she had thought about the risks involved. But guys, she seriously didn't care about the risks. She assured me it would be a business I would love. Anyway, I said, if that's what she wants, it's okay. At least I've done my part as a supportive husband, so no one can hold me responsible if anything goes wrong. She then told me she had already opened the business account and was just waiting for my approval, leaving me shocked. Wow, I see she's really serious after all. She even opened the account and gave me a task to do, asking me to take pictures of the rooms so she could upload them to the website. Not again. How am I supposed to do that? I mean, it's not my job, it's hers. My wife always knows how to get me, and I must admit, it's sweet. The following night, I was in the room working on my laptop when my wife came in and, and told me she was worried. Since starting the business, she hadn't been able to get a client, 
and since she uploaded the pictures, only one person had contacted her, and just for one night. Wow, someone has called already? I think that's a good sign, I said. Then she told me she turned him down. Why did you do that? I asked, surprised. She replied that she turned the person down because he was booking for just one night, which wasn't profitable for her. So hilarious, I laughed. I stood up, walked over to her, and began advising her. My love, you know we can accept that one night, let him come and leave, and then in two hours the next person can come in. You'll have those two hours to tidy up the room before the next guest arrives. Think of it that way. The more people, the more money you'll make, I shared, leaving her amazed by my fabulous idea. She thanked me for it. A few days later, I was in the living room working on my laptop when my beautiful wife came downstairs, excited about the guest she was, she was expecting. I was so happy for her as she finally got her first client. Shortly after, we heard a knock on the door and she went to open it. The client came in and I quickly greeted her. But from the look on her face, I could tell she would be a tough one for Tonia. Well, let's not judge too quickly. Let's get to know her first. I continued with my work as Tonia left to show the client her room. Later that night, I was in the room with Tonia and she told me what her guest had done to her. I mean, she just started this business and she was already stressed out. She tried to make me understand that her guest was ill-mannered and arrogant and that she really couldn't take it anymore. Hmm, guys, please help me. What do I do now? I quickly made an excuse for the guest saying maybe she was in a bad mood or going through a difficult time. But guess what? My wife still found fault in what I said, believing I was supporting the guest. I'm just tired. It's too early for all this. She really needs to get used to it since she chose this business herself. Plus, I warned her ahead of time to be prepared for such clients and even tougher ones. A few days later, I was at work when I received a call from my wife, Tonia, asking me to come home. I was so surprised to hear her panic, thinking she was in trouble. I got home in a hurry and found her sitting on the couch, looking so scared. She quickly hugged me and began telling me how, me how the guy who came to our apartment looked so different from his pictures. What really scared her was how he kept saying he just wanted to rest. She was convinced he was a restless ghost, which left me curious. I told her it's possible for people to look different from their pictures. People change their looks every day. He must have just changed his appearance. Anyway, I'm just glad my wife is okay. That's what matters most. Weeks later, my wife hosted another guest, and it saddens me that I'm caught up in all this stress and drama. Just this morning, I was in the room when Tonia, my wife, came in and started complaining about her guest, who she said was disrespectful, rude, and loud. Honestly, I don't know what to do anymore. She was the one who suggested this business, and now she's the one complaining. I really don't understand her, but I can't abandon my wife. I had to keep encouraging her to endure it reminding her that it's all part of running a business. A few days later, a new client came to our apartment to rent a room for a few days. I attended to him, gave him some rules to follow, and told him not to hesitate to let me know if he needed anything. He seemed cool with it, so I took him to his room. The following week, I came into my apartment and met one of Tonya's clients. Um, we exchanged pleasantries, and she introduced herself as Kayla. I don't know why, but I felt an immediate connection with this particular client. I let her know that if she needed anything, she should just let us know. Looking at her, guys, she seemed so calm and gentle. Not jumping to conclusions, but she's been the best client we've had so far. After that, I went upstairs to my room. Later that night, I was in the living room working on my laptop when Kayla walked in. Hey, what are you doing down here? I asked. She told me she wasn't feeling sleepy and had come to the living room to watch some movies, but since I was there, she would leave. I stopped her and told her not to worry, that she could stay. She sat down to watch her movies while I continued with my work. The following morning, I was about to leave for work when Kayla came out, dressed for work, I presume. She asked if I could drop her off at her destination. Guys, she is such an amazing soul and she hasn't caused any issues, so I told her to get in the car, and I drove her. On our way, we chatted and talked as if we'd known each other for years, and I was really enjoying the conversation until we reached her destination. She got out of the car, and I left. Later that night, 
Kayla and I were both in the living room having a drink together. Curious about why she came to our house for her short let, I asked her about it. At first, uh, she didn't want to say anything. Maybe she didn't find me to be a confidant she could trust. Uh, I assured her that her secret was safe with me, and she finally felt comfortable enough to open up. She told me she was running away from her past, her pain, and her sorrows, uh, which made me even more curious. I asked her to share her story with me, but she insisted she didn't want to be pitied. I encouraged her to speak out, telling her it might ease her mind a little. She eventually opened up and became very emotional, sharing how she lost her mother and how, how life hasn't been the same since. Hearing her story, I felt so much pity for her. Honestly, guys, it was so touching and emotional. I had to comfort her that night, feeling guilty for making her remember her past. Uh, I really felt her pain. For her to keep such a positive attitude and energy despite her pain shows me she's indeed a strong woman. I assured her that everything would be okay in no time, and she felt better as she wiped her tears. The next day, I was inside when I heard a knock on the door. I quickly went to open it and, to my surprise, saw a stranger with a weird look. Who are you? I asked. He told me he wanted to see Kayla. Oh, okay, I said, and then I let him in and took him to Kayla before going back upstairs. That same day, my wife Tonya and I were in the room enjoying a quiet moment together when we heard a noise coming from Kayla's room. We quickly went downstairs to check what was going on, but when I knocked, the strange guy came out and told us everything was fine and that we should mind our business. This left me feeling disturbed as we went back upstairs. Seriously, guys, I don't know what is going on, but I have this feeling Kayla is in some kind of trouble. Let's keep observing. The next morning, I was about to leave for work when Kayla stopped me to apologize for what happened the other day. I hold no grudges against her, so I didn't see any reason for her to apologize. I asked her if she was okay, or if there was anything she wanted to share. I told her she could speak up, and I would be able to help her. However, she insisted there was nothing wrong. I feel she is hiding something, but if she says everything is fine, then it's okay. After that, I bid her farewell and left. Later that day, when I got back to my apartment, I met Kayla's guest. As I was about to go upstairs, he stopped me and threatened me to stay away from Kayla. Seriously? He came to my apartment to threaten me? Who does that? I didn't understand what was going on between the two of them, but I warned him that if he ever tried to threaten me again, he could be sure he would have to leave my house. After that, I walked away. What nonsense! The following day, I went to visit my friend to discuss what had been happening in my house. Bro, that girl needs help, I said. I can see it in her eyes. She wants to say something, but is too scared. I wished I could help her. My friend had contacts with private investigators, so I asked him to help me make a call to see if they could find out who that strange guy was. After a lot of pleading, he agreed, and we got into the car and drove off. The next morning, I was in the living room watching TV when I heard a noise coming from Kayla's room. Before I could react, Kayla ran out of the room toward me, crying for help. The guy was chasing her. Hey, stop there! I yelled at him. I told him that if he wanted to get to her, he would have to get through me first. I ordered him to leave my house, but before I could say another word, he punched me in the face and I blacked out. Later that day, I woke up tied up in the kitchen. When my wife, Tonia, walked in and saw me, she was shocked. They had tied my mouth and I was just muttering. She quickly removed the cloth from my mouth and untied me. I told her that it was that strange guy who had done this to me. She immediately took me to the hospital. Honestly, guys, I was only trying to help, and now look where my help has landed me. Please, know your limits before challenging anyone, or you might end up like me. Later, my friend gave me the news about who Kayla and the strange guy really were. They were fugitives. The police had been looking for them for the murder of a man who happened to be Kayla's brother. From the story, her elder brother was abusive, and she was trying to defend herself when her boyfriend, the strange guy, Kay came in and helped her break free by shooting her brother. Unfortunately, he didn't survive, and that's why they ran away. Now, I understand when she said she was running away from her past. This is unbelievable. I thanked my friend for calling the police on them. The next day, I got discharged from the hospital. Tonya and I were in the living room together, 
and I could see she was regretting her decision. She told me she was no longer interested in the business. I was relieved, but what amazed me the most was that she admitted she had been wrong and was always coming up with disastrous business ideas. I praised her for being a great host and a good manager, but the issue was that this idea just wasn't working for her. She only ventured into it because other people were doing it, not realizing that what works for others may not work for everyone. I made it clear that no stranger would be allowed in our apartment anymore. I missed the times we spent together, our private moments, and our cherished memories. She also felt the same. I assured her that I would get her a space of her own since she loves doing business and she could start something fresh there. She was so excited about it and we hugged each other tightly. Quick tip, guys, don't jump into a business just because others are doing it. Make sure you do your homework, research, and surveys to see if you're willing to take the risks and responsibilities. Also, be innovative. Remember, business involves profits and losses, success and sacrifices. So what did you learn from my story? Uh, please share your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe to this channel for more interesting and latest Nigerian movie updates. See you next time.